Okay, today we will be talking about the Gregorian calendar class. And this class was added uh, quite recently to Java. And before that, we used to use date class. The date class is now a deprecated class. That means that it is supported. However, it's not preferred to be used in Java applications. So after the date class, Java developers introduced a calendar class. And then now we are down to Gregorian calendar class. So let's create an example where we will try, where we will try to use the Gregorian calendar class. So let me call this one using Greg Cal. Okay. So I'll check public static void main and then click finish. So I'm here now cleaning the clutter so that my code looks a lot cleaner. Now in the good old days, we used to create an object of the date class. Pretty much as I've taught you in the earlier sessions how to go about creating an object. By the way, we use the term instantiation. If you haven't forgotten about that, instantiation or instantiating an object. So what basically instantiating an object mean, or the process is called instantiation, what it means is declaring a variable whose data type is a class, not a primitive type. So for example, if I type something like this string, str1 equals to new string. So str1 is basically an object because the data type is a class. Similarly, if I have, let's say, a class called pizza, and I say pizza, pizza1 equals to new pizza. Now, that is also another example of instantiation. Now, it's giving me red lines because I don't really have a pizza class right within this project. But if I had, it wouldn't give me the red line. So it gives red lines under two situations. Either you don't have it, period, or it needs to be located. So that's basically an example of how do you go about instantiating an object. So whenever you read a statement instantiate an object of XYZ class, it pretty much means write the name of the class, write the name of the object, just make it up, a name that follows the conventions of Java equals to new so that you can allocate memory for this object followed by you call the constructor of your choice. Right now in both of these cases, I'm calling the default constructor. So we would now like to get rid of this so that we can get started with Gregorian calendar class. And here is my object for Gregorian calendar class. And as you have seen that it highlights it in red as well, even though I know the class is extremely valid, the reason is because it can't really see the class. All the classes like string or any of the other classes that are Java built-in classes, which you do not need to tell where they're coming from, they actually are part of a package called java.lang, J-A-V-A-L-A-N-G. All the other Java built-in classes who belong to any of the other packages must have an import statement so that your class can see where they're coming from. So for this one, it's an extremely easy thing in the software Eclipse. We go under source and we choose organize imports. And here you go, it adds an import line and it understands where this class is coming from. If I bring my mouse over it, it tells me a little bit detail about it. So this class was promoted by uh, Pope Gregory XIII. So this, that's why it's called Gregorian class. It's based on the Julian calendar, but it uses a little different calculations for calculating the leap year. So um, anyway, so after I create an object of this class, now the bottom line behind this application is that I would like to accept from the user a higher year, and then I would like to extract from the current system, the current year, and I would like to take the difference of the two and then tell the user that you have been employed at this firm for approximately these many years. So I'll, I'll use the word approximately because I'm not putting months into consideration. So a person could be hired in November of 2001 and it's now September or October or 2011, whatever it is. So the person has not completed the full 10 years. So I'm using the term approximately. So that's what you will be seeing. So anyway, so here is my Gregorian calendar class. So now I will be creating an object of scanner class so that I can take the 
input from the user and that was I think it is a big breakthrough in Java especially in the console application development because when I started working with Java man it used to be pain in the neck to accept something from the console but now thanks to the Java developers who developed the scanner class that made our life a lot easier so now I will be displaying a prompt just so that you know you might have learned this in your earlier classes in enter to programming that prompt is a output message is an output message that you display to the user before you accept an input so we have a special name for it we call it a prompt so here we are asking user please enter your hire date and we are kind of, sort of kind of trusting the user um, to make sure that the user will going to follow the format of why 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 so four four digit here now we declare the higher ear variable in fact let me call this please enter your higher ear so that the user knows I'm only looking for ear and now I will be accepting the input from the user so input dot next in so that gives me my input from the user now I will going to since I have Cal one and it's highlighted in orange because I have declared it but haven't used it yet so I will now going to declare another variable called current year and in this current year variable, I'm going to ask um, cal1 to call a method called get and pull out from the Gregorian calendar class a constant call year. Now, it's extremely important that you understand the difference here. Notice I'm calling the function get using an instance of the Gregorian calendar class. If you call upon an instance, uh, if you call upon a method or if you call upon a property of a class by using an instance name prior to it, that entity, method or property has to be non-static. That's why it is callable by an instance reference. So for example, if I bring my mouse over the get, notice the definition of the get. It says public int get. You don't see the word static in there. However, if you look at year, year gets called by the class name. So Gregorian calendar dot year. So it has the reference of the class name before it, not the instance name. So as I bring my mouse over, it literally tells me public static final. So it's a constant because the word final and it's static. That's why I'm able to call it by the class name. So it's extremely important to differentiate if something is declared static and it's public so that it's callable outside of the class. So something that is static must be called by using the class name prior to it. Something that is an instance uh, level or non-static must be called with an instance name prior to calling it. So here I have the higher ear and I have the current ear. So now I am displaying back to the user, okay, uh, the current ear is what's stored in the current ear. And the higher ear is what's stored in the higher ear and a message working for this firm for approximately as I said earlier I'll use the term approximately and here is the difference of the two the current year minus the higher year and followed by a message years and always remember when you are doing something like this where you get to display some calculations or a value of a variable between two strings you're concatenating it always remember to leave a space around that so that you don't end up putting everything right next to each other without a space so that's extremely important one last thing that I want to talk about here before I go about running it it's for example there are certain classes like date let me declare it over here so that I can talk about this point and I, I will gonna erase this line so for example date now if you notice it highlights it in red 
So, but I know it's a built-in class, so I go about under source and click organize imports. Now notice, I could have used the keyboard shortcut, control shift O, or I could click on organize imports. Now since, unlike Gregorian calendar, there are more than one classes that are called the date class. So that is why now the Java compiler or the IDE basically is asking me which version of date class would you like to choose, the one from the util package or the one from the SQL package. So uh, if I choose util package and click finish, now it adds java.util.date. If I get rid of this line, now it starts complaining about the import saying that you have an import that you haven't used. I can go under source, organize import, and it actually gets rid of any of the lines that are not in use in the import statement. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this. So I click on the run application and here you go. It asks me, Please enter the higher year. I say, okay, the higher year was 2001 and press enter. And it says, the current year is 2011, the higher year was 2001. So you have been working for this firm for approximately 10 years. Now notice a, a space before 10 and after 10. And that was only placed because I left a space within the double quotes around the calculations. Now leaving this extra space on both sides of plus sign, it's only for readability. It doesn't really does anything else to the program. So even if I drop the space like this, the Java won't complain. And there will be no difference to the outputs. If I click and run it now, and I say, okay, now higher year is 2003. And notice the output still comes out to be the same. However, the code has become less readable. So it's extremely important that I make my code a little bit more readable. Anyway, hope you would have enjoyed watching this tutorial, and I'll see you guys pretty soon in a different tutorial. Thank you very much, and have a good one.